Welcome. Today we're going to look at another important topic for tuble players. And that is cleaning off the heads and also taking out and putting back in the string that goes underneath the canard. So on a tabla, you've got the main resonant head, which we call the sur or the madan. And then there's an outer layer of leather, kind of a protective layer, that's called the canar. And the string goes underneath the canar in order to hold it up off of the sur. A lot of drums, you'll find baya and daya, the low and high drums, you'll find that the canar is a little tight and it can press a little bit on the sewer and that will mute the tone. So we stick a string under there, which has to be the right size. If it's too big, it can actually change the tuning from the na to the ta to the tune ratio can change if it's too much tension from a string. So if it's the right size string, it'll hold the canard just up off of the sewer enough to release the vibration. You'll notice the sustain is a lot greater and also a little bit more high end. So I went online and I found some more footage uh, from YouTube that I did about 11 years ago. And uh, I thought that that mostly was pretty good. So with a few extra added tips, let's take a look at that. I'm Ty Burho, and in this video I'm going to show you how to clean off your heads, clean off the shahi, clean off the sur and the kanar if it needs it, take out any existing string if there's any there, and then clean out underneath the kanar, and then put the string back in, which is of course at a different place on the baya, it's all the way to the rim, and on the daya, it's uh, maybe three-fifths of the way in. So I'll show you how to do that and get the head sounding as good as they possibly can. This part of the tabla maintenance process has to do with keeping the heads clean and as resonant as possible. So, uh, for example, when I'm again touring with Zakir on the road, sometimes not only every concert do I go through this process, but sometimes every half of every concert at the beginning and also at intermission. You can use your butter knife. Okay, you can. Now what works even better for this part of the process is a credit card. It's the best use of credit cards I can think of. Or um, a dulled off, a little bit sharper knife. This one I can't really cut myself with. I dulled it off here. Yeah, but it, had, it does have a bit of a point so it gives me, me more control. Okay, so I'll just show you what I do. This is kind of typical, a little bit of chalk stuck on there from playing. And I'm going to start with the shahi, start in the center, and just rub my way out onto each of the layers. With the, with the sharper edge, I can get in there. I just got to make sure that I'm not getting any black. Generally you won't if it's a nice, nicely made gob. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go around and clean that off. Right, so that's good enough for the gob. Now on the sewer, this is a fun process. Wearing a black shirt is probably not the best idea. Quite a bit of chalk on there. When you blow it off, uh, try and hold down the the edge of the canard so that it doesn't slip underneath that. But we're going to clean that out anyway. All right, so basically get that cleaned off. All right, so that's pretty good, basically. And now I'm going to take my knife and do the same thing. There's no string in here right now, so I don't need to pull that string out. Instead, I can just go all the way in. Look at all that chalk. That's pretty typical. Sometimes it's much worse than this. Um, so now hold down the edge of the canard, blow that off, go in, and I'm going all the way to the edge with the tip, just being sensitive not to poke through and pulling it down. More chalk. There's more 
chat came out. <laughs> On some people's drums, I've done this before, and I've pulled out cat hairs and uh, little bits of uh, you know particles of like clothing. <laughs> One of these days, I'll pull out a small furry animal. Okay, so now that's basically clean. You can do that pretty quick, really. All right. Now, I will do the string next. All right, so I'm gonna work this string up. Right now it's sitting right there, you can feel it. I'm pushing it all the way against the rim, okay? And now I'm going to slowly continue working it. Again, you can do this process once you got it down. You can do it really quickly. All right. So there's my spot. I'm going to move it up to about Mm, there. Now I'm going to cut it here so that that string can then lay into that spot there. So I can get out the old needle nose pliers. Just leave this there. You don't want to pull on it this way because you can tear the canard. Leave the needle nose pliers there and then pull the string to break it this way. Alright, now I'm just going to lay that in there. So that's the process on the baya. Now the process of doing this on the daya is a little more tricky, simply because generally there is a string in there already, and sometimes you can see it even um, creating a little uh, line on your canar. And we're going to need a couple of extra tools for this. In order to get that string out, either you need to just loosen the whole thing up and get in there with your butter knife and basically just grab it like that and pull it out. Or if it's very tight and it's really in there, then this is a tricky part. These are sewing machine needles that have a nice thick uh, post to them, but also a larger area that you can grab onto. So they're, they're super handy little tools. All right. So now, using your butter knife and your sewing machine needle, you can lift up, maybe find a spot on here where the string is a little closer to the edge. I'm going to put my butter knife in there, and then if I just twist it a little bit, it'll lift up the canard, okay? And it loosens the pressure on the string, all right? So you never want to go in, of course, down. But holding on to the needle, lifting up the canard, you can go in and actually grab hold of that string. There we go. Okay, see that? Just pull it out. It just basically pokes through a teeny bit of the string and then you have a handle on it. You can tug that out. Once you get this far, then you're done with your knife for now and you're done with your needle and just pull it out and, and be specific how you pull it out because ideally you want it to pull out any stuff that is on this side of the string with it. All right, now that string, that string looks like it's pretty flattened out to me. So I'm not gonna reuse this string. I'm gonna slide this in and you can actually feel this as you get good at it where that spot is. Okay, in this case it's about th three-fifths of the way in, which is usually about the ratio. Okay, so I'm not pushing it all the way in, I'm pushing it just to about three-fifths of the way. And I'm going to maintain that. If 
if you go too far in at one spot, just pull that out gently from an angle, not up this way, because you'll tear the canard. So pull it out from the side and start over. So just poke it in, get it started, maybe a couple of inches worth, smooth that out, and keep the uh, butter knife from going in too far so you can kind of track it and then you can see the line of the string. So if it's too far in, you can pull it back and redo it. If it's too far out. Oh, you gotta watch out for if it's too far out and you've already gone around, pushing it in there is just gonna make it come out somewhere else. So you wanna make sure it's at the right spot before you continue on. area again and now there's my spot so I'm gonna stop just shy of that spot get my pliers out Such a cut it and then lay this in there so it meets the other one there we go so again this process of cleaning the head and putting the strings in uh, requires a few tools. We've got our butter knife, no serrated edge, very clean and dull. We have our needle nose pliers, mainly for just cutting the string. So you can use anything for that, scissors. Of course, the string itself, which is a cotton thick thread or thin string that's fairly firm, not too soft. Okay, and we have our sewing machine needles. All right, I hope that was helpful. And you'll find that the more you play around with those techniques and keeping the head clean and the canard just off of the sewer, it's gonna make a big difference in the tonal quality of your instrument. So enjoy, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.